The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. I'll speak on the river of God. You are talking about overflow. But I want us to look at the source. The river of God. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength. An ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear. Though the earth give way. And the mountains fall into the hearts of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms he lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bows and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. For the purpose of the theme overflow, I will be concentrating on verse 4. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy place where the Most High dwells. There is a river. The psalmist actually didn't tell us the name of the river or where it can be found. He left us to do our own guessing. But he says that there is a river. The psalmist is very sure that there is a river. And the purpose of this river is to make glad the city of God. He also didn't tell us the city of God. But he told us that well, the most high dwells. So if you want to know where the city of God is, you have to look for where the most high dwells. And then when you get to where the most high dwells, you'll find the river. That is the interpretation of Psalm 46 verse 4. There is a river whose streams... Now the river has streams, but the river is the river. But it has streams tributaries and these streams make glad the city of God and the city of God is where the most high dwells let's look for the city of God then we'll go and search for the river that will make it a bit easier Psalm 87 He has founded his city on the holy mountain. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the other dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are said of you, city of God. So he has, in a way, given us the city and the name of the city. If you didn't get it, let me read verse 1 again. He has founded his city on the holy mountains. The Lord loves the gates of Zion, if you like, Jerusalem. More than all the other dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are said of you, city of God. 
So we are safe to say that the city of God is Zion, Jerusalem. So let's go back to 46. Psalm 46. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. So far as the city of God is concerned, Psalm 87 is saying that it is Jerusalem. And then Psalm 87 confirms that it's the city of God. But there is a river. Then he says that the river is found in the city of God where God dwells. Now, if you want to trace where God dwelt, if you like, on earth, he is not dead. But where he revealed himself on earth to mankind, then we have to go back to Genesis in the Garden of Eden. Would that would I be correct? Fine. So let's go to Genesis chapter 2 from verse 4. This is the account of the heavens and the earth. When they were created, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, now no shrub had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant had yet sprung up. For the Lord God has not sent rain on the earth, and there was no one to work the land. Now, God, there hadn't been any rain, so you can't say that there, is, there are traces of water, and that you can, you can link, you can say that it's because it rained. This is what the Bible is trying to say. Verse 6. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Verse 10. A river. Watering the garden flowed from Eden. From there, it was separated into four headwaters, if you like, streams. So, verse 10 also says, also says a river. So, he is trying to agree with the psalmist in 46 that there is a river. A river watering the garden flowed from Eden. From there, it was separated into four headwaters. Psalm 46 says that there is a river whose streams, whose headwaters, whose tributaries make glad the city of God. The name of the first is the Pishon. It, it winds through the entire land of Havilah where there is gold. Verse 13. The name of the second is Kishon. It winds through the entire land of Cush. The name of the third river is Tigris. It runs along the east side of Asher. And the fourth river is Euphrates. But he didn't name the river. He rather gave us the names of the tributaries. So we have still not gotten the river yet. But at least there is a river. And it is found in the presence of God. God dwelt in the Garden of Eden at that time. His presence was there. Chapter 3, verse 8. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Now the man said, I heard you walking in the garden. The man is trying to say that it was normal for us to hear you walk in the garden. It, it didn't surprise the man, but when he heard, he could know from the stairs that God is around. And wherever God is, there is this river. But this river has traveled from generation to generation. When he got to the time of Israel, the psalmist says that this river dwells in Jerusalem. And it is true. At that time, that was the habitation of the river. And he says that it makes 
the city of Jerusalem glad. They could sing and say, all our springs are in thee. He, the people in Jerusalem, they pride themselves in the fact that they have a God. They used to be slaves in Egypt. But from slavery, their God proved to be stronger than all the gods of the nations. After time, they have become masters. And they will pride themselves in the covenant that God has with them. Even in circumcision. So they will call all the others who are not circumcised of, of other nations. They call them a slayer, uncircumcised. You could just see the pride in the voice of David when he was telling Goliath that uncircumcised first time. Because God has become theirs. He has chosen them to be his own. And he has decided to dwell in the midst of them. Jerusalem. Wherever this water is, it will make glad that particular city. In the New Testament, when Jesus came around, there was this woman who was still arguing as to where to worship. Then Jesus took time and listened to this woman. When the psalmist was talking about Jerusalem, the city of God, it was the designated place that God had chosen among all the places on earth. Even though the whole world or the whole earth is his. That this is where I want my dwelling to be. To the extent that when even the Israelites were caught in Ezra, when they were praying, they would want to face where Jerusalem is. Towards the temple. Because they believed that the presence of God was there. And it was. It was. But Jesus told the woman in Samaria, there is going to come a time. And now it is. That the true worshippers will not have to go to Jerusalem. If all of us had to go to Jerusalem, how many of us would have been in church this morning? There is going to be a new order. So woman, don't you worry. God is seeking for people. Not those who travel to Jerusalem, but those who worship him in spirit and in truth. Because God is bringing a new order. Through the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, a new thing has begun. God, through Jesus, has changed all. Now listen, the Bible says that in the beginning, there was darkness over the surface of the earth. And God said, when Christ hung on the tree, there was darkness over the surface of the earth. And he shouted, it is finished. It is as if a new one has been born. A new earth, a new order. Let's go to Revelation 22. Revelation 22, verse 2. This is the destination of the water. Let me start from verse 1 to make a better sense. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life. As crisp, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Here, we didn't talk about tributes because there is nowhere for this river to go. It is the end of all. Everything has come under the King, the Lord of Lords, and the river is mentioned without any tributes. But listen. What is this river? Psalm 65. Now take verse 1. Praise await you, our God, in Zion. To you, our vows will be fulfilled in Jerusalem. The people are waiting to praise him because there are many good things happening that they want to praise God about. Now let's jump to verse 9 for the sake of time. You care for the land and watered it. You enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with grain. For so you have ordained it. You drench it for us 
and level it ridges. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. You crown the year with your bounty and your cats overflow with abundance. The glasslands of the wilderness overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. This is in Jerusalem. That is why they say that your praises are waiting as it is in Zion. Look at the last verse. The meadows are covered with flocks. And the valleys are mantled with grain. They shout for joy and sing. What is the song they sing? Psalm 87. The last verse. Now this is the song of the average Israelites those days. As they make music, they will sing, all our fountains are in you. I like the King James. He says, all our springs are in you. They, they, they pride themselves in that. It is their source of livelihood. All our springs are in you, Jerusalem. But the springs of Jerusalem is in the almighty God. Now listen. Let's go back to Psalm 65. Verse 9. This river that we are talking about, look at how he describes it. You care for the land and watered it. It is this caring of the land and the watering that brought a lot of booty that makes them to be glad. Psalm 46 says that there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. And now the psalmist in 65 is saying that you, God, care for the land. So where is the river? And what is the river? And who is the river? Jeremiah chapter 2. Let's take verse 13. My people have committed two sins. That is God speaking. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water. This is like Jesus speaking in John chapter 7. The spring of living water. Not living waters. Jesus said, out of your innermost being shall flow rivers, but of the living water. It is like Psalm 46 saying that there is a river, but the streams make glad the city of God. The living water is he himself. Wherever he is, the water flows his government is upon his shoulders. Wherever he gets to, he rules. It's not like a Ghanaian president or a Nigerian president or American president who have boundaries. You cannot just come from America and operate as a president. You don't. But for our king, for our God, his government is upon his shoulders. Wherever he gets to, he puts his throne and he rules. Psalm 46 says that the, where the presence of God is, is that river. Hold that one closely. By his death, things have changed. Things have changed. It is no longer about Jerusalem. Not at all. It's not about Jerusalem. Ephesians chapter 2. I read from verse 11. This is Paul trying to explain certain things to the church in Ephesus. Through his evangelistic ministry and his work among the Gentiles, some Jews and Gentiles have all come to faith. And there's still that tension of that racial tension. Because even the Jew are still giving his life to Christ. He still believes that he's better than the Gentile. And some of them were still even disturbing the Apostle Paul, trying to cause him to force the Gentiles to get circumcised. Others too were not that comfortable, like the James and the Peters. They were still thinking that the Mosaic law should be, at least, you should be managed, if not obeyed. But Paul was adamant. He said, no, because there is a new order. Therefore, that is from verse 11. Remember that formally, that is to agree with the past, 
that God's dwelling was in Jerusalem. And it made Israel his people. According to Exodus 19 verse 6, God says that I have chosen you to be my son, even though the whole world is mine. So God was still interested in the rest of the world, but at that time, Israel was his choice. And Israel was his dwelling. And Jerusalem was the city of the Most High God. Therefore, remember that formerly, you who are Gentiles by birth and called the uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands. Remember that at that time, you were separated from Christ, excluded from the citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenant of the promise, without hope, without God in the world. Now, for those of us who were not Israelites, we were without hope, we were without God. So God couldn't, we couldn't have been the dwelling of God. When they were saying, all our springs are in you, we couldn't be part of that. When they said that we have a city where God dwells, it is not in Accra. It was in Zion, Jerusalem. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by, by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace. Who has made the two groups one. Two groups. The Jewish group, the Gentile group. He has made two groups one. And has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two thus making peace. Let me try and explain this. The apostle Paul is saying that there is a new order. The new order is not about Jerusalem, it's not about Israel, it's not anti-Gentile. But God has put the two together. And out of the two, he has made one humanity. So Jew, Gentile together, and then there's an outcome. Something came out of that. Paul says that that is what God has done. Let's jump to 18. For through him, we both have access to the Father, by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people. Now, those of us Gentiles, now we are fellow citizens with God's people and also members of God's household. That is why our spirit, plus the spirit of God, can now cry, Abba, Father. Jesus Christ, Abba, Father, we also cry, Abba, Father. Because we, have been, we are part of God's household. He is our father. Jesus is our big brother. We are all brothers. Whether from Jerusalem or from Accra or from Lagos, it doesn't matter. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself, the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together. And rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. Now look at verse 22. And in him, you too. In him, you too. Are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. So we are saying that in the time of old when the psalmist was saying that there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Where is the dwelling of the Lord? The Bible said it was Zion. But he says now God lives in us by his spirit. So where is the river? Hebrews. Chapter 12, verse 18 downwards. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire. Remember the mountain of Sinai where the Moseses and the rest who were forbid not to go close 
where even animals were not asked to touch the mountain. Then the tendering and the smoke even frightened Moses. He said, you have not come. He's going to say very soon that there's a new order. To the trumpet blast or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further words be spoken to them because they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I'm trembling with fear. Now, if Moses at that time was afraid, what about Joshua? Look at verse 22. What words begin then? 22. But you have come to Mount Zion. You have come to Mount Zion. So the psalmist now cannot talk about there is a land, there is a city called Zion, Jerusalem, where the Lord dwells. No, we have also come to Mount Zion. To Mount Zion. To the city of the living God. Do you hear that? The heavenly Jerusalem. He didn't say Jerusalem, he said heavenly one. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. I pray that God will open your eyes so that you see the number of angels that are here. Because the king of kings is in our midst. So his, his escorts are here. To the church of the firstborn. Now there is an introduction of the word church. Whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of the spirits of the righteous made perfect. To Jesus the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speak better words than that of Abel. Now, he said you have come to the church. First Corinthians chapter 10. I read verse 32. First Corinthians 10, 32. Remember that in Ephesians... He has made one out of the two, the Gentile and the Jew. But now there's an introduction of the word, you have come to the church. The heavenly Jerusalem, the new Zion. Do not cause anyone to stumble. Whether Jew, Greek, or the church of God. So up until this time, human beings were divided into two categories. Either you were Jew or you were Gentile. But now there's a third group called the church. The church is the believing Jew and the believing John Tao put together. The Jew here refers to the unbelieving Jew and the unbelieving Gentile is there. So now we have three categories of people. The Jew who has not given his life to Christ. The Gentile who has not given his life to Christ. And for the believing Jew and the believing Gentile, we form a new community called the church. This is the new Jerusalem. This is the true Zion. Say, so you have come and you should believe it that we have come. We have not just come to him, we have come to Zion, the city of the most high God. We have been called out from among the nations so that God would dwell in us and wherever he is, there is that river that makes glad the city of God. The Bible says that don't you know that you yourself is not about Jerusalem, the temple. You yourself are the temples of God. And that Christ dwells in you. Jesus told a woman of Samaria that you see, I'm going to do a new thing. The water that I will give you shall well up in you like a fountain. So it's all going to start. So the man Jesus, as he walks on the shores of Galilee, was God. And he is God. And he will be God. And wherever he is, there is that river. So he has the river. Then this woman comes around to fetch water. So, ah, if and only if you knew because when he said, give me to drink, the woman said, you a Jew, asking me a Gentile, 
for water? Jesus said, Shed your church. If you knew the one who is talking to you and the one who asks you for water, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. And the woman said, You don't have anything to fetch water. She was coming around. Go and bring your husband. The water that I will give you, it will well up. I'm not going to give you a river, but I'll give you water. And the water has the potential to well up in you. When he was about leaving, he told the disciples, out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. God has now come to make his dwelling in man. And wherever he is, there is that river. And he's expecting that out of our innermost being, this river will flow. And wherever the river goes, there must be life. Out of your innermost being shall flow. When you find yourself in any environment, you have to be conscious of the fact that there is a river. That makes glad the carrier. And its tributaries should make glad the people it touches. Remember, we have a job to do. Let's see if we can have some similarities in Ezekiel 47. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel from verse 1. The man brought me back to the entrance of the temple. Now, this was about a vision of the temple, but not the temple of Jerusalem. It's about the temple of our day. I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple towards the east. I saw what? Water. Remember that it's not river. He saw water. Jesus said, I will give you water, but out of your innermost being shall flow rivers. So he gives the water, and he's expecting that the water will well up in you to become rivers. Coming from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. He then brought me out through the north gate and led me around the outside of the other gate facing east. And the water was trickling from the south side. Now the water was like, if you like, drops. As the man went eastward, with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits, and then led me through water that was ankle deep. He still led him through water that was ankle deep. Now, if you have water to this level, you can have young, daring, small boys, or young men, who can decide to play soccer and they can get results. Now listen, the water is just ankle deep. Now when you hear that, they will make a lot of noise. Yeah. When your anointing is not that deep, you just make a lot of noise. I'm telling you for a fact. You, you talk about everything. They make too much noise in churches. They are always saying, this is wrong, this is that, this is that, no. The anointing is not that much. Then he says that he measured off another thousand cubits and led me through water that was knee deep. He measured off another thousand and led me through water that was up to the waist. Now listen. If water is up to your knee, it is now time to walk in slowly. Now you have to be dragging because now the water is heavy. Such people pay the anointing, they don't make too much noise. Then the water rises to the waist. Now when water comes to your waist, it is a dangerous point. It is a dangerous, up until this time it says water, water, water. It is dangerous, especially when you don't know how to swim. Now when it comes to your waist, the only thing you fear on earth is not the human being standing there, it's not the gun, it's not the soldier, it's not the arm robber, but what you fear at that particular moment is the water. 
So you see such people just looking at the water. They are afraid that it shouldn't well up again. They are afraid of the water. Now listen. It is not enough to just be shouting in church. Do you fear God? 72% of us Ghanaians claim to be Christians. But we live in such a corrupt society. If it was the 30% that were engaged in corruption, would we have felt it? How do you make your money? How do you treat your wife? Do you fear God? Now listen. He measured off another thousand, but now it was a river. Now listen, now the water changed to what? A river. River. That I could not cross because the water has risen up and was deep enough to swim in. A river. Eh? A what? A river. That no one could cross. He asked me, son of man, do you see this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, now the language has changed from water to what? River. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. This river makes glad the city of God. It, 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 it bursts. It brings the greens. There is life in the river. Anything that the river touches, there will be life. He said to me, the water flows towards the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah where it enters the Dead Sea. Now the water is going to enter the Dead Sea. When it empties into the sea, the salty water there becomes fresh. The salty water there will become fresh. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. Listen, swarms of living creatures in the Dead Sea will live wherever the rivers flow. There will be large numbers of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. The water that I will give you, you must watch out, should well up in you until it starts overflowing. And wherever the water gets to, there must be life. I can't imagine a dickness and an elder who have tied the knot. Yet, in their home, is war. None of them, river is flowing. I can't imagine such people giving birth to children and the children turning and becoming wayward. Is they are wayward because your river is not flowing. But wherever the water gets to, there must be life. Think I've made my point. But let me tell you a secret. Genesis chapter 7. I read verse 11 and verse 17. This water must well up in you. It must flow. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, on the seventeenth day of the second month, on that day, all the springs of the great deep burst forth, and the floodgates of heaven were open. Now, this is how God brought forth water on the earth to destroy the people of Noah's time. Two things he did. Not knowing that God has a store of water in the deep. So he opened the one in the deep. And then he opened the one up. So while some were coming from the inside, others too were coming from the top. Now listen, that is who you are. That is why Jesus said that I will give you water and in you will well. Then on the day of Pentecost, he says, wait, another one will come. So if you are a believer... You must daily open the water in the deep on the inside of you. Christianity is not about shouting. Sometimes in the PIWCs and the charismatic churches, we force shout on the people. And we didn't know this. We are typical Pentecostal, classical Pentecostals. When we come to church, we don't force anybody to do anything. Our aim is to see the spirit flow. 
And when the Spirit is flowing, there will be life. No, there will be life. You see, you don't force water to flow. It is a natural cause of water to flow unless something is blocking it. So I want you to flow. I want you to keep to the source, the river of life. And when you keep to the source, you wake up in the morning and you are by your scripture. You are not just reading 15 minutes as we were taught by scripture union. You want to drink deep. You want to drink deep on the water. And as you drink deep upon the water of life, that well on the inside of you to rise. And as you wait upon God, some can also come from above. And when that fish from above, and then the one on your inside meets, it will flow. I want to beg you. There's too much artificialism in church today. That is why this generation is producing very bad Christians. Because the pulpit is making the pew bad. When we stand here and we talk about nothing but prosperity, what is money to cockroach? What do we need money for? Because God will give us anyway. But he's looking for a people of whom he can flow. That river of living waters. So that the woman in your house, so that that's your neighbor, so that the one working with you will come and ask you, where can I get this water? May the Lord bless us. May he cause our eyes to be open. May we go back to the roots, even to the river of life, where we go to church and we want nothing but him. We want nothing to fail us but him. Today we are busy talking about the witches and the wizards. They didn't teach us that. They didn't teach us that. Who are witches? Do you know the strength of a river? Do you know how strong a river is? A river, when it is angry and overflowing, can come and stand at the back of your house. It doesn't matter how tall the house is. Let the river be there. Count it. It will have all the patience. Then you will see that the skyscraper will fall without noise. Without noise. That is the power of river. Now it is in you. Let it flow. So that Ghana will benefit. God bless all of us.